Hello everybody, my name is Edward Fitzgerald and I'm a primary school teacher who is currently teaching 5th class in Skullvara, Clarenbridge, County Galway. Using picture books in my maths lessons has been a passion of mine over the past number of years and I'm delighted that Maths Week Ireland have invited me here today to produce a short video of how to use picture books in a maths lesson. Picture books can be used at all class levels, from junior infants right up to 6th class and there are a lot of benefits associated with using picture books in maths lessons. Research shows that picture books can lead to enhanced mathematical understanding. They can also facilitate problem solving in the classroom, which can in turn can lead to enhanced mathematical talk and discussion. Finally, picture books can also lead to an increase in children's motivation to learn mathematics. The picture book I'm going to show you today is called The Doorbell Rang by Pat Hutchins. This book will be suited to a first, second or even third class level and it's a great way of introducing the whole idea of sharing and dividing. Today I'll be reading the picture book and I'll also be showing you a follow-up activity which you can do after reading the book. So, let's begin. Before reading, I would ask children to look at the front cover and to predict what they think the story will be about and to share their ideas with the rest of the class. As you will see in a moment, I will also stop and ask children some important questions based on the pictures within the book. I've made some cookies for tea, said Matt. Good, said Victoria and Sam. We're starving. Share them between yourselves, said Matt. I made plenty. That's six each, said Sam and Victoria. They look as good as grandma's, said Victoria. They smell as good as grandma's, said Sam. No one makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as the doorbell rang. On this page, I might stop and ask the children to try and identify some patterns that they might see in the picture. For example, we see patterns on the tablecloth, on the floor tiles, and also on Sam's jumper. It was Tom and Hannah from next door. Come in, said Ma, you can share the cookies. That's three each, said Sam and Victoria. They smell as good as your grandma's, said Tom. And look as good, said Hannah. No one makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as the doorbell rang. Here I might stop and ask children to count how many chairs they see around the table. I might also ask children to try and guess and work out how many legs of the chairs are there in total. It was Peter and his little brother. Come in, said Ma. You can share the cookies. That's two each, said Victoria and Sam. They look as good as your grandma's, said Peter, and smell as good. Here I might stop and ask the children to look at Sam and Victoria's face and wonder why did they look so unhappy. Nobody makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as the doorbell rang. It was Joy and Simon with their four cousins. Come in, said Ma, you can share the cookies. That's one each, said Sam and Victoria. They smell as good as your grandma's, said Joy, and look as good, said Simon. No one makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as the doorbell rang. And rang. Oh dear, said Ma as the children stared at the cookies on their plates. Perhaps we'd better eat them before we open the door. We'll wait, said Sam. It was Grandma, with an enormous tray of cookies. How nice to have so many friends to share them with, said Grandma. It's a good thing I made a lot. And no one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma, as the doorbell rang. So, there you have it. Such a wonderful, simple story. After reading the book, I would then proceed to the main activity of the lesson. I would arrange the children into groups of three and provide them with the necessary resources. For this, they're going to need some cutouts of cookies, lots of paper plates, and also a worksheet to record their answers. Using this worksheet, I would ask the children to work in their groups to try and find out how many cookies each child would get if there was one, two, three, four, all the ways up to 12 people at the table. 
I would also ask the children to try and work out how many cookies would be left over. I would then circulate around the room as the children are working out this activity. I would engage in conversation with some of the children to get a better understanding of the mathematical thinking. To conclude the lesson, I would bring all the children back together and give them the opportunity to explain their solutions with the rest of the class. Here there might be some scope for further exploration of what to do with the leftover cookies. And the whole idea of maybe having some of the leftover cookies and dividing them out to the rest of the children might be explored further. So there you have it, a lovely example of how picture books can be used in a maths lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you might be tempted to use picture books in your future maths lessons. I hope you have a great maths week and thank you for watching. Thank you.